Namaste. So uh, a few days back I mentioned that something wonderful had happened and that uh, I wanted to wait a little while before sharing because, you know, I like to confirm things. I don't like to just say stuff, you know, and it's not ripe or it's not correct or whatever. So now it's confirmed and I can tell you um, well, as you can see now, I changed ashrams. I'm in Sanyas ashram. And um, why? People say, <laughs> I already took, I was already sannyasi, why I needed to change? Well, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> it's an order coming down from above. So uh, this video, I'm going to tell the story of the last couple of weeks. Thank you. And all what happened and why. So that you can understand. You know, I've been working on this uh, self-realization for a long time. And, uh, well, there's routine work like regular daily sadhana that goes on day after day. And then there's special times when extraordinary things happen. So this is one of those times. <laughs> As you should know, we've been in a planetary retrograde season. All the major planets were retrograde there for a while. And just a little while ago, a few I think 10 days ago or so, Mars went direct, and yesterday Saturn went direct. So all the deep analysis and review of life <laughs> has finally reached a conclusion. The conclusion was manifest in a vision. Uh, if you followed our series on Gayatri, Gayatri Mantra, one of the lines of Gayatri's, Bhargo Devasya Dimahi. I meditate on that divine light. And the divine light, of course, is the light of the self. And uh, the other day, maybe three, four days ago, I was meditating on the light, which is my usual practice and uh, chanting Gayatri Mantra. And out of nowhere, well, out of the light, actually, <laughs> came Chandra Shekhar Indra, Maha Swami Gau. Uh, and uh, he is another realized soul, another, another uh, jnani, uh, like uh, similar to uh, Ramana Maharshi. But his teaching is more on the level of the uh, karma yoga and bhakti yoga rather than jnana directly. But of course he's teaching in the context of jnana, in the context of Advaita. So his teaching is more for people in the Dvaita Vada or the Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Mm. Trying to cool off here. So, uh, it's not so suitable for most Westerners because it's very much involved with rituals and cultural forms of Vedic society. However, <laughs> he's very powerful. And his mood is of granting boons, granting wishes by extraordinary means. So you can look him up on the internet and uh, read about him. He's wonderful. And his uh, influence in my life has been just as wonderful. 
No, what happened is that out of the light, he appeared to me uh, and said, you should take sannyas several times. Uh, he appeared to me three times. And in Vedic society, this is a standard. Uh, now, of course, I could have been imagining this, right? But it happened three times, three days in a row during the evening meditation. So I had to take it as an order. But even so, still I was a little doubty. <laughs> you know me, I like to confirm everything, right? So the last time on the, the third visit, he revealed his form as goddess Ambal. Goddess Ambal is the consort of Shiva, Shiva Shakti. And she's often pictured riding on a lion. Ambal is the motherly aspect of the goddess. Not like Kali. Kali is a angry manifestation of goddess. Sort of like Narasimha for Vishnu. But uh, Ambal is very motherly and caring. And uh, she loves Ganesh, her son, uh, and her other son, Skanda. So I worship both of them. And evidently she must be pleased with me <laughs> because uh, she sent her representative, Chandrasekhar Indra. And uh, so he told me, Take sannyas, take sannyas. And I'm thinking, how can I take sannyas? I've met many uh, swamis in the last two years since coming to uh, Ramana's shelter. But I can't say I really like any of them. <laughs> Most of them are much too involved with rules and regulations and uh, you know, hard mental frameworks and like that. So that's not my style. Uh, I'm more spontaneous, more bhakti oriented. So then I thought, oh, wait a minute. Now, my dear friend, uh, the driver who takes care of me very well, who has in the last two years, uh, is a disciple of a sannyasi named Jnana Shakti. Jnana Shakti, of course, <laughs> is a devotee of Ambal. <laughs> in fact, he was a pujari for 25 years in the Skanda temple. So, huh? like, like mother, like son. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I went to, I approached Swamiji through my friend, the driver, and he, I told him the story, and at the time I was in a very, very uh, intense devotional mood, and I was experiencing ecstatic symptoms and so forth, uh, like uh, heripalation, the goosebumps all over it, and, and chills and tears running from my eyes and there's so many things. Huh? So, which was accompanied by deep bliss and, and ecstasy. And I approached him and I paid my obeisances and I begged him, please give me sannyas, and he blessed me. He blessed me. So there was no ceremony, there was no formalities, you know, it was all uh, very spontaneous and beautiful and full of love. And then when I went home that night, I had another vision of Ambal. And she said, you take sannyas, you become my devotee and worship me, and I'll give you all powers. Yeah. So, see, the way this thing works, <laughs> is you make a promise 
And by your promise, you become adhikari. Adhikari means authorized. And there's different grades. But we discussed this in the previous series. Uh, Kanishta adhikari, Madhyam adhikari, and so on. Tivra adhikari, and Ati Tivra adhikari. So when one becomes authorized, then a particular level of service opens up for him. A particular level of realization, too. So I made a promise. I'm taking sannyas. And I'm going to live as a sannyasi for the rest of my life. And then Mother Ambal made a promise that because you worship me, I give you all powers. And I was going, oh, how does that work? You know, I was never much interested in mystic powers. I never got any of the mantras or the sadhanas to attain them. Uh, but I can see if I really want to help the world, uh, because the, the human race is rapidly going extinct. Huh? Men generate 40% less sperm than they did 20 years ago. And the curve is a straight line. It's showing no sign of slowing down. And why? Because of plastics. There's a particular family of chemicals, phthalates, that are spermicide. And they're everywhere. They're in all kinds of plastic things, in the environment, in the food chain, in the fish, in the plants, animals, everywhere. So we've really done ourselves in, you know, between the climate change and this uh, chemical pollution. <laughs> we're in bad shape. <coughs> so there's not much time. This message has to get out. Huh? In the Bible, there's a quote. In the latter days, the secrets will be shouted from the rooftops. So... I'm under the roof, but I'm, I'm shouting. I'm giving all the secrets, uh, things that were kept for thousands of years in strict confidence and only passed down verbally from master to disciple. Well, none of you are qualified to, to take a master. <laughs> so you're going to have to deal with this and you're going to have to like get it on your own, I guess, you know, unless you want to come here. I'll try to help you, but you have to show up. Anyway, I said, how am I, how's, how's this going to work, you know? What's this going to do? Well, one thing led to another, and I have been given a mantra, a very powerful mantra. Uh, it's called the Saundarya Lahari. Saundarya Lahari means... Either you could translate it, the tsunami of beauty and happiness. Huh? It's kind of the way I feel, like I'm riding a wave, you know, a big, strong, powerful wave. <laughs> I'm not in control of my life anymore. Uh, I mean, really, from my point of view, there is no I for this life to be mine. <laughs> this life is going on. <laughs> and not by my own choice or not by my own volition, but by the power of my gurus, by the power of the goddess. And that's just the way it is. I have to accept. So we're going to do a new series starting very soon on Soundarya Lahari. And I'm going to introduce these mantras. They're very, very advanced, very powerful, very difficult. Most of you will not be able to uh, use them, but at least you can hear them. But that will be something. Uh, so th this mantra is chanted a hundred times on certain holy days or certain holy weeks, actually. It takes that long. It takes about an hour to chant the whole thing. And um, this is what gives the, the great souls all their mystical powers, 
the worship of the goddess. And when we start this series, I'm going to get into all why that is and how it all works. <laughs> Everything's been revealed to me. <clears throat> and I'm going to do my best to share it with you, or at least to point at the moon, the goddess. And it's up to you to follow it up. Okay? It's always that way. So I'm very happy to share this, finally, this wonderful thing that has happened and been confirmed and given the means now to do it. And, uh, well, there's more. <laughs> there's lots more. But that'll do for now. Aum Tatsat. Aum Harihi Aum.